I wish to speak of the Savior's parable in which a householder went out early in the morning to hire laborers. After employing the first group at 6 in the morning, he returned at 9 a.m., at 12 noon, and at 3 in the afternoon, hiring more workers as the urgency of the harvest increased. The Scripture says he came back a final time, about the 11th hour, approximately 5 p.m., and hired a concluding number then. Then just an hour later, all the workers gathered to receive their day's wage. Surprisingly, all received the same wage in spite of the different hours of labor. Immediately, those hired first were angry, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and heat of the day? When reading this parable, perhaps you, as well as those workers, have felt there was an injustice being done here. Let me speak briefly to that concern. First of all, it is important to note that no one has been treated unfairly here. The first workers agreed to the full wage of the day, and they received it. This parable, like all parables, is not really about laborers or wages any more than the others are about sheep and goats. This is a story about God's goodness, His patience and forgiveness, and the Atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a story about generosity and compassion. It is a story about grace. It underscores the thought I heard many years ago that surely the thing God enjoys most about being God is the thrill of being merciful, especially to those who don't expect it and especially feel they don't deserve it. I do not know who in this vast audience today may need to hear the message of forgiveness inherent in this parable. But however late you think you are, however many chances you think you've missed, however many mistakes you feel you've made, or talents you think you don't have, or distance from home and family and God you feel you have traveled, I testify that you have not traveled beyond the reach of divine love. It is not possible for you to sink lower than the infinite light of Christ's Atonement shines. Whether you are not yet of our faith, or were once with us and have not remained, there is nothing in either case you have done that cannot be undone. There is no problem which you cannot overcome. There is no dream that in the unfolding of time and eternity cannot yet be realized. Even if you feel you are the lost and last laborer of the eleventh hour, the Lord of the vineyard still stands beckoning. To those of you who have been blessed by the gospel for many years because you were fortunate enough to find it early, and to those of you who have come to the gospel by stages and phases later. And finally, to those of you, member or not yet member, who may still be hanging back, to each of you, one and all, I testify of the renewing power of God's love and the miracle of His grace. His concern is for the faith at which you finally arrive, not the hour of the day in which you got there. So if you've made covenants, keep them. If you haven't made them, make them. If you've made them and broken them, repent and repair them. It is never too late so long as the master of the vineyard says there is time. Please listen 
to the prompting of the Holy Spirit telling you right now, this very moment, that you should accept the atoning gift of the Lord Jesus Christ and enjoy the fellowship of His labor. Don't delay. It's getting late. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.